most important thing we need to do is for countries where this burden is already unbearable to help them with that restructuring. Limited to reforms, but held back by a mountain of debt from the past. We have seen Zambia proving that debt should be restructured and, ladies and gentlemen, an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding of Zambia Creditors, has been finally signed. A round of applause for Zambia. Um, you could say it's 7.6% global. For comparison, what they spend on education, the first issue. The second issue is what that does effectively is it crowds out the ability of those governments to be able to put money to work for human capital, for climate, for infrastructure, for the things they need to put their country on the right pathway to the coming year. Uh, when you look back um, at, at how far we've come since then, do you feel the need now for more initiatives? Do you think now is the time to be bold once again? Uh, thank you very much, uh, and I think um, you are, uh, Christina uh, was uh, instrumental in reaching the DSSR. I mean, it's, it was a very difficult uh, period. Uh, you know, funds were actually even very fully available. Uh, countries were scrambling for their own lives uh, and for their own people, but still, there was hope that you know, creditors, even with the shock that they were facing in their own countries, actually cared about debtor countries. They came together um, through IMF, World Bank, and the G20. And, and, but then it is actually not possible just to suspend that service you know, indefinitely. So we needed to make sure it was extended for another period, but then we needed something to make sure that there is actually another way to deal with this debt, which then, through negotiation, came the common framework. Um, and the idea behind common framework is we are actually fixing the engine of the plane when it is on air with full passengers on board. Huh? So you really needed to think very quickly find a way to deal with it. And it's not something that you can actually design that fits every country and every group of creditors. So it would need it to be really custom made, depending on circumstances of the individual country itself, but also the group, the nature of group of creditors. Um, I think it is working. And I think we should be creative in finding solutions that will help these nations. And by the way, um, not a, you know, a political appointee and, and a technical appointee, and I could say. The IMF is wonderful. The World Bank is wonderful. The Paris Club, the official treaties committee, led by France, China, and South Africa, they've been wonderful. The creditors have been wonderful. So thank you, everybody, for delivering this uh, to us. Thank you so much indeed. You talked about the reforms that we've had to implement. Obviously, the first thing on the reform agenda, and perhaps we've never said this to you, let me tell you that it's uh, embarrassing to find yourself in debt distress. One of the first things that we did was to say, never again should we allow this to happen in our country, at least not in this administration. Therefore, the first reform was to put legislation that makes it harder for any government, included stronger powers for parliaments to say yes or no to propose borrowing. Another element was putting binding constraints in the legislation. 